It's more than you'd think. Mm. Two, the reason I'll bet that any Windows is going to work is that one, Grub works just fine with the FI. Mm -hmm. Two, Grub can boot Windows just fine. Mm -hmm. Case closed. Because ah. once Windows boots, it's fine. It just has to boot. Really? It doesn't uh, use the BIOS after it boots? Uh, not to the point. Basically, once you get it booted, as long as the hardware abstraction layer is okay, it's going to work. Uh -huh. Now, the question will be if, if, Windows, if the old versions of Windows include a hardware abstraction layer that can handle whatever proprietary bits might be in these uh, Mac tell boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's my question. Is something no one seems to be addressing is these Mac uh, books have things like the Express slot, they have things like the built-in on motherboard Wi-Fi and USB that, uh, and no, not USB, Bluetooth. That's part of the MacBook. They have all kinds of Mac stuff in them. Does you know Windows has a lot of drivers, but does it have drivers for that stuff? Will it work? Now I could see Microsoft specifically going out of their way to add all that to Windows Vista because hey, they'll make money selling Windows to people who want Mac hardware. It's win for them. No, because anyone who's using Windows on Mac hardware totally is not paying for a new v copy of Windows. I don't know. Those people already dropped a couple Gs on a laptop. Yeah, also, which means you can't have to shell out $250 for Windows. Uh, maybe we'll see discounts or something. You never know. Maybe. I, I just really don't think Microsoft wants to sell Apple hardware. They want to sell hardware that has Windows on it already. You know? Yeah, but consider the markup they make when they actually sell Windows in a box. I mean, Dell pays, I think, 30 or $40 for Windows, but it's 300 bucks if you go to the store and buy it in a box. I think the store makes most of that money. I don't really think Microsoft is, is raking it in there. I don't know. I don't know who buys those boxes. I mean, I bought a Windows 2000 box in the year 2000. Like, I can only, I can only see buying one of those in like an absolute like, drop-dead emergency. Like, you absolutely need a, win a valid Windows CD and CD key. You can't get one any faster than going to Staples. You don't know anyone who's got one. You, you can't pirate one. All the internets are real Well, see, slow. that's now. I mean, back in the day, when Windows 2000 came out, I built my computer, like, the week before that, and then I bought Windows 2000 at the store, like, the next day. Oh, all right, yeah. I but and back then, you couldn't pirate it. Now you can pirate it, but back then... I bought then, Windows 98 SE. I had 95B from already, but I got a 98 SE CD... Just because 95 couldn't play some of the games I was buying. You know, I never had any 95 after A. Wow. I used Windows 95A, and then I had Windows 2000. Hmm. I had 95B, then I had 98SE, and then I got 2000 way later. <laughs> and then I got XP for free from school, legally. In fact, I remember when you got Windows 2000, or when you first really used Windows 2000, and you, would, you the staunch Microsoft hater, admitted that it was, in fact, a fairly decent product. It was better than Windows 98, is what I said. And it is. Yeah. That's about all I said. Because Linux still just... I was using Linux. I've been using Linux for like seven years. Or even more, I don't know, since high school. But it was never good enough to be my 100% of the time operating system until like two or three years ago. Yep, because I remember I tried. You gave me a copy of Mandrake, and I tried to install it on this extra computer I had. And it installed, and it was just kind of terrible. You know, the thing was is that, like, at the time, Mandrake didn't seem terrible because I had been using Red Hat. Yeah. <laughs> and relative to Red Hat, it was great. You know, and it's basically, it wasn't great enough for me to use it all the time. But I also got to think that in college, I was playing a lot of PC games, a lot of Steam, a lot of Counter-Strike. So True. that had a strong effect on it. I mean, we would literally come home from class, like, every day and then just start playing Counter-Strike for, like, four hours. Yeah, but I did use Linux in college for all of my work, and then in my, like, my last two years, I was pretty much using Gentoo only. Yeah, I had, I actually, it was weird, but despite the fact that I was in IT, we used Windows a lot more than we used Linux, yeah. because most of our labs were Windows, like Active Directory, Windows Domain, crap, because all the Linux stuff was kind of easy, and they didn't spend much time on it. I had a lab partner do all that, and I did all the Linux stuff. See, I was the lab partner who did all the Windows stuff, and then the other guy did all the Linux stuff. uh -huh. Of course, now I use Linux exclusively. So for my thing of the day, I got the video that disappeared from Google Video yesterday is back. It's basically a video of three guys at a comedy festival singing a song that's kind of funny. Yeah, it wasn't as funny as I expected anything like that to be, but 
at least the topic hit close to home. Very close. Yeah. Watch it. <laughs> so my thing, uh, you know, whenever they bring games over from Japan to America, they always romanize them or localize them. Mm-hmm. Like they'll change the cover, they'll change translation things, they'll take out the cultural jokes that Americans wouldn't get, they'll make the game easier, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, here's a site that shows the opposite. What they do to games that come from America to Japan. And yeah. they do a lot of the same things. Well, it shows the mo- the, the biggest thing it shows is the, the changing of the cover art of the packaging. Which was a lot more than you'd expect for some games. The biggest one, I think, was this, uh, what was the name of the game? Like, Sudoku or something like that? I don't know. It was some RPG. Some RPG. But the American cover had, like, this hot CG, obviously CG babe on it. And the Japanese cover had this hand, well, look like hand-drawn, anime-style, RPG-looking character of the same babe. Who I thought was a lot more attractive. I thought it was very much a better-looking cover. Most of the Japanese covers, I, I think, were either equal but different to the American covers, or just better-looking with brighter colors, and they were happier. I, I think the biggest example was the Ratchet & Clank ones. Oh, yeah, because the American ones were these crappy CG, like you see on the front of every stupid third-party game for every system ever. Mm-hmm. And, and in Japan, there were these funny anime-type drawings. Yeah, and in the American covers, there were like these angry guys. It was, it was an angry cat guy. I don't know what he is, but he's an angry guy. He's angry. He's angry with a gun. But on the Japanese cover, he's like smiling, and he's like, whee! And even the friggin' military games, the American one, dour soldiers with guns killing people. Mm -hmm. Same game in Japan, happy soldiers chilling on a beach. Yep. And even though it's the same exact game when you actually play it, except, of course, for the translation, you know, it's 99% the same game. But they change the cover so much because, you know, I guess what appeals to the, the different cultures and the different sides of the ocean but the Japanese covers actually appeal more to me than the American ones do. I find that interesting, but I note that our taste in games seems to vary greatly from that of most mainstream gamers in America. Mm-hmm. We're like the old school Nintendo Japan types. Yeah. I do think, though, that they greatly underestimate how big those types of Japanese games would sell here, and they should really bring more of them over. Yeah, I do think they'd sell. I don't think they'd appeal to a wide audience. But I think the audience they do appeal to, namely people like us or people who listen to this show or people who go to like anime cons, you know, us types, I think we would Geeks? more than make up for that. We would definitely make up for it. And, you know, you just don't have to print so many of them. I keep saying this. Katamari came over. They only printed like a few copies per store. They didn't and yet, make... I mean, not to, I mean, you all know I've talked about my coworkers in my office periodically, and to say that they're fuddy duddies, and I hate using that word, is kind of an understatement. They all know what Katamari is and love it. Yeah. So, all those other things that are like Katamari that you're keeping from us, Japan, send them on over. ASAP. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, we decided to start another ongoing series. Well, it might just be a two parter, I'm betting. At least a two parter. We yep. could possibly stretch into three because this is a subject we could rant on a lot. For a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. But basically, conventions, anime cons, uh, gaming cons, trade conventions, Linux conventions, all sorts of conventions. It's convention season starting about now, I think. Ohio Con just happened, right? Yep, and so. uh, it's not too long till Katsukan. Yep. So we're going to prep you all, especially those people who, uh, if you haven't been to a convention, you're thinking about going. Haven't been to a convention not thinking about going. <laughs> Maybe you'll think about going, because you should. <laughs> Maybe you're a, a convention veteran, and, you know, it doesn't we, matter. Now, we might, I hope we don't sound, like, condescending or like we're trying, like we're explaining this stupidly, but I guess, to put it lightly, we're, we've been to a lot of conventions. We're, and, what you could say, grandmasters of convention skills. I mean, we're not the old man who has 40 Otakon badges. That guy's scary, oh my yeah, god. Yeah, that guy has, like, he wears this armor of badges from all the cons. I don't think he wears to. it anymore, but I recognize the guy, and I still see him there. Yep. But the main reason that we want to do this is that we have a lot of friends, and we like all of us go to conventions. Like, we go to Otakon, you know, 22,000 geeks, and we run into a lot of people we know. And it seems like almost every other group of people we run into has some sort of drama or problems or they had issues with the convention and that made it a less fun experience overall for them. Yeah, pretty much anyone I meet, even like just hearing complete strangers talk to each other, 
I just hear a lot.